Hello and welcome to the physics lab. Today we're going to talk about Ohm's and Kirchhoff's law because that's the lab that you'll be doing. If you were doing another lab, we'd talk about that one instead. That makes sense. All right, so this is uh, lab four here. And what we have here is a protoboard. It's different than the ones you've used in the other labs. And as you can see, the components are a little bit smaller. But they're the same kind of components you were using in the previous lab. It's just that now we've taken them out of their big pieces of plastic and made them so that they can be used like that. Now, the reason for that is, is because as we go along, you're going to get to more sophisticated circuits and then it gets harder and harder to use the other plastic ones. Plus, Greg likes these ones and we want to make Greg happy. All right. So the first setup, if you read the lab manual, that's the old one right there, but it's still got the right information in it, is we have two 100 ohm resistors. Now, how did we know that they were 100 ohm resistors? Well, there's two ways you can do that. One is you can look at the box that they came out of and say it says 100 ohm. That's not always right, though, because some people don't always put things back where they belong. However, if you notice, there's a bunch of stripes on here, and you can't read them very well on here. But that's okay, because you can read them pretty well in real life. They're not that blurry in real life. And there's a guide on how to read those. It's not that difficult. There it is. Thank you, Greg. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, according to the lab manual, is we want to write down in the sheet, in the Excel spreadsheet, we've got to put the power supply voltage and the calculated equivalent resistance. Well, two 100 ohm resistors in series, that's pretty easy to figure out. You should be able to figure that out on your own. I'm not going to give you a hint right now. And you set the voltage. You know what would really help, Greg? What? If we had a plug for this thing, but we stole it when we were ready, getting ready for this one. Ugh. So you really do need one of these plugs to plug the power supply in. Other way around. So let's hear it. Can you hear that? Now? Oh, I see. I should have taken that one. Ah, oh, well, electricity. It's overrated. That's how you plug it in, in case you didn't know that. Maybe you follow. I don't know. So we'll set the voltage, and I forget offhand what it says. I think it's like 3 volts or 6 volts. Let's take it, set it to 6 volts. Let me make it 5. Whatever it says, it doesn't make it 6. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm looking at the current. Always check the current. Make sure we don't go over 0.2 on that. If you can, I'll avoid it. All right, so then we're going to measure voltages. And so we set ourselves up to measure DC voltage on the 20 ohms, 20 volt scale. We turn it on because it doesn't work unless you do. And we take, okay, it says zero, the hold button's not on. And what we want to do is measure the voltage across V1 and V2. So you do that by holding the, the probes like that, just like you did before. And that's about three volts. And the other one, is about 3 volts. And you also measure the total voltage, which should be about six, 6 volts. And it is. The actual numbers you get are going to vary, probably vary from the, uh, the what the power supply says. And that's OK. Write down the numbers you get here. These numbers are approximate. The voltmeter is what you want. So you do that, and you also write down the units. Remember, no percent signs and no units in the cells, unless it says units, then you write unit, then you write the units. But you don't write the units in the same cells with the number. All right, so now that we have the voltage and we have the resistance, you can calculate the current. All right, and we want to calculate the current through one, resistor one, resistor two, and the total. Now, remember, this is a series circuit. So what does that mean about the current? Do you remember? I'll give you a second more. In a series circuit, all the resistors see the same current. Now you can calculate it a number of different ways. One is you can take the total voltage and divide by the total resistance. Or you can take, that'll give you the I total. If you wanted to calculate the current through I1, you can take the voltage across resistor 1, so that's V1, divided by 
just R1. And similarly for I2, it'd be V2 divided by R2, T2. Oh, I'm sorry, Star Wars reference. Uh, now, those numbers should all be the same. And if they're not, guess what? You did something wrong. All right. I hope you didn't do anything wrong, because that would be bad. You fill out all the current one. Easy enough. OK. So then we move on to the parallel circuit. Now, in the parallel circuit, because we're fast, just like a cooking show, we have two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. And you do the same thing. You measure the voltage, like that, across V1. And it's about 6 volts. And the voltage across V2. And it's also about 6 volts. Now, measuring the current on this one gets a little bit tricky. And you remember, when we measured current last week, last lab, all the steps we had to do, I'm not going to go over them again. But I'm just going to do it. We're going to measure the current through this particular one. Now we have to break the circuit somewhere and if we wanted to measure the current just through the, uh, if we want to measure the total current, well that's easy. We can just break the circuit, well, one thing we can do is just take this here and put it here. Now we've broken the circuit and if you see the, the power supply, the current is zero. And then we move this guy over here to the 20 amp and we measure it was about 0.11 before, so we're, we're going to be fine. It says 0.11, so we're okay. And then to get a more accurate measurement, we go to the fused input. And we get 1.1124 milliamps. Okay. So now we want to break the circuit going to just one of the resistors. And how do we do that with these ones? This is a little bit tougher. We can just, oh, flip. no, don't do that. First of all, I gotta go back over to here. Remember, you've got to break the circuit first. If you haven't broken the circuit, you're going to break the multimeter. So, how do we do that? Well, we can pull this out here. All right, and now all the wire along, along a vertical right here, those are all connected. Horizontally, they're not, except up on this first row. All right. So what we can do here is we can move this guy over to here. Mm, something like this. And we can take two short wires, which I don't have right now. Do you get two short wires anywhere? Oh, it's getting hot. All right. Let's pretend there's two short wires here. And we're back on the 20 amp unfused. You put one short wire right here, and you put one short wire right here. And then you touch the probes, one to each of the short wires. Okay, now if these were a little bit more pointy, you could just do it straight into there, but you can't. Okay, so the electricity comes through here, the current comes right here, through this little red wire there. And now we've broken the circuit to only one of the resistors. It's still going to this resistor down here. We moved it over. Now we're going to complete the circuit again, and it's going to go through the current meter, and we can measure the current. Again, you got to imagine there's two short little wires here. All right? And then we can do the same thing for the other um, resistor. Okay? Just take this out, put this one back, and I'll move this resistor out of the these resistors tend to get a little warm, so just be careful. You don't want to burn yourself. Make your lab partner do it. Okay. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We've broken the circuit now to this resistor, and we measure the current between them like that. All right? Remember, all the stuff I taught you about measuring current. Don't blow up the current meter. Now, in the last part of this, we have a complex circuit. Whoop. And Greg is saying, oh no, I didn't set up the complex circuit prototype for Matt. And that's okay, Greg, because it's a combination of a series and parallel circuit. You're just going to do the same thing. And I'm not going to set it all up for you because you can figure it out for yourself. But just imagine, well, all you got to do is imagine that we take both of these wire, 
resistors here and we attach them someplace like this. Now we still have a parallel circuit, but as you notice the red wire isn't connected to there. And then we take another resistor, let's take one of these, and we connect it in series now to the two parallels. All right? That's a little bit too tight, but it'll do. And now what happens is the current comes through this little red wire, goes into this one resistor, splits out and goes to the two resistors, comes back together and goes back on the green. All right? Now there'll be uh, examples of all three boards, not just the two, set up in the front here for you to imitate. By the way, turn that a little bit. So, told it, thank you. Just a feeling unbalanced. I was feeling unbalanced. Not that I'm normally balanced anyway. Uh, all the way along here, you have to tell you, you have to calculate your values for your currents and your voltages. And you measure them like you just saw, and you have to determine whether Ohm's law is obeyed. You want to calculate the percent difference between what you calculated would be the answer and what you actually measured. All right. So this is a pretty easy lab if you paid attention when you were measuring current and know how to use your multimeter. All right? And the purpose of the last lab was to make sure you knew the, how to use the multimeter well enough so you could do this lab and you would see the point here. And the point is that for a series circuit, the current doesn't change. And in a parallel circuit, the voltage doesn't change. Now in a series circuit, the voltage does change, but in a parallel circuit, it's the current that changes. Okay, right. Just making sure I get that right. And it's important to get that right, and it's important to understand the difference between the two. Now, a couple things that you might have done if you get things, uh, if you're getting the wrong answer. One is, if you're seeing that your voltages are not changing, for example, if you're two voltage, if you, when you do the series circuit, if your voltages on your individual resistors don't add up to the total voltage, you did something wrong. Stop get some help. All right? If your currents turn out to be different, stop. Get some help. You probably hooked up the circuit wrong. All right? Now in the parallel circuit, if your voltages are not the same, that's a problem. Or pretty close, you know. If your currents Do we have the same are they the same uh, resistor? Yes. Okay. The currents should be about half of the total current, and they should the current through the two resistors, all right? So if you get 100 amps, 100 amps, 100 milliamps total current should get 50 milliamps through each resistor. In the complex circuit, I'm going to let you think about that one on your own. It's not as complicated as you think. It is complex, but it's not complicated. All right, so you got any questions? <laughs> I forgot the video. You can't ask any questions. Well, if you do, send me an email. All right, and I will see you in the physics lab.